It's a joy to be with all of you this morning. It was 10 years ago we moved to Hyderabad and were part of this church. All of you welcomed us with open arms and the relationship there has grown stronger. We are doing very well as a family and uh, we are progressing in our spiritual life. Very actively involved in the ministry at Ahmedabad. As I was sitting here, I was uh, recollecting the faces. Uh, quite a few have moved out. But, uh, 
But with, with gratitude, we remember all of them. For uh, today's uh, short meditation, uh, we will go back to a Sunday school uh, 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 character. David and Goliath. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 17. The background is, uh, so uh, we got to read the entire chapter actually. So this has 15 verses. Uh, I would have loved to read all of it, but since time does not permit us, I request you to go back and read the entire chapter, that is 1 Samuel chapter 17. We will look into key verses. The background is Saul as a king has been rejected by God. <laughs> That's chapter 15. And the reason God says is disobedience. All my life I thought Saul was a bad guy. Till last week when I attended a family camp and there the person was mentioning the good qualities that Saul had. See, of all the things that God had commanded, He was commanded to kill the Amalekites. He killed all of them except one guy, the king. Which means if he had to kill 100 people, he killed 99 except one. One percent disobedience. One percent disobedience. But God did not like it. And he rejected Saul. So when we, when I look at my life, how many times have I disobeyed? God has been so merciful. Saul was definitely better than me. But God rejected Saul because of disobedience. And God tells him, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And then God goes on to say that rebellion is as good as witchcraft. Uh, That's verse uh, 23 of chapter 15. <coughs> Remember those who rebel. If you are a God's child, God sees rebellion as nothing less than witchcraft. And stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. God gives enough time to come back. But don't take it for granted. God sees rebellion and stubbornness as witchcraft and iniquity and idolatry. One, one very important verse is chapter 15, verse 17 and then 19. So verse 17 says, And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, this is Samuel telling Saul, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Verse 19, Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? God was telling him, you were small, I made you big, why don't you obey me? This is the same God telling us this morning. You were small. I made you big. What stops you from obeying me? And today we do very well in life, doing very good jobs, holding big positions, earning very well. We often forget our background. All who come from Kerala, go back a generation or two, 
Who were our parents and grandparents? They were very poor. But spiritually very rich. Their priority was obeying God's word. God bless their generations. We changed. Obedience was not our priority. It was not for me for many many years. I yes, and maybe for some of you seated here. So God is telling this morning. You might be CEO of a company. Remember, you were poor. You were small. I made you what you are today. Why don't you obey me? Then, then the background, second part of this background is chapter 16. David is already anointed as king. Saul is rejected. David is selected. Why did God select David? Verse chapter 16 verse says, the, uh, verse, eight, the verse 7, the Lord says, The Lord looketh on the heart, not on the outward appearance. The Lord is interested in your heart. Psalm 44 verse 21 says, He knows the secrets of the heart. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says The heart is desperately wicked The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked And Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Uh, you know, everything starts in the heart. What is coming out of my mouth, it all started with here. Whether good or bad, it starts here. God is interested in heart. You, you might dress very well. You might act very good in the church. You might pretend, pretend to be the finest of believers. That, that's what Samuel felt when he saw his elder brother Eliam. He was the best of best. Eliam, when he saw he was really good. God said, don't be mistaken. He is not the one I have selected. I look on to the heart. And David fits into that. We move to chapter 17. And it starts, verse 1 starts now. Verse 12 says now. So the present is important for all of us. What we have done in the past. We may look back with pride. But when we look to the future, we may be afraid. But how we live the present is important in the light of eternity. Verse 1 says you can read. Yeah, chapter 17, verse 1. Three important words, words gathered, assembled, pitched. So, what does this tell about the war that was going to take place? Both the parties were prepared for the war. Both the parties knew that the war is going to be long. That's why they pitched their tent. Both of them had come to win. When we look at us as believers and our spiritual life, 
we are at war whether we like it or not our enemy is Satan uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against the principalities and powers of darkness so what happens in war you don't care about your enemy you are absolutely focused on victory. Your enemy, our enemy, uh, the, the, the devil is like a rolling, rolling lion going after, after us to see whom he can devour. Battle is dangerous. And there are casualties. We all have seen animals hunting animals, you know, in TV. Whom do they hunt? The weak. The newborn. The sick. The one who is alone. Those are hunted down. Be careful. If you are not spiritually growing, you will be hunted down. Look at all people who have gone out from among us to cults like Jehovah's Witness, to Jesus only. You know what their spiritual standing was and why they went out. Be careful. Don't be babes. Don't be babies. Still asking for milk. Grow up. Verse 4. The situation was already bad and tense, and to make it worse, here was a giant. His height is 9 feet 9 inch. His coat was 58 kgs. His, bra, his helmet was of brass. His feet was covered with brass. His spear, the tip of the spear was 6.9 kgs. This was the enemy that stood in front of them. Imagine the strength that this, is, uh, this enemy had. Giant came up suddenly. Challenges come up in life suddenly. When you are actually not prepared for it and you don't want it. Look back, back at your life. When, God, when giant stood up. And God gave you the grace to come over it. God gave you the grace to come. Be prepared for Goliaths in the future. Okay, verse 10. He says, I defy the armies of Israel this day. I defy the armies of Israel this day. I don't care about your armies, is what he is saying. Yeah, and look at the response of Saul and the Israelites. Verse 11, they heard, they saw, they, dis they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And verse 25, they discussed among themselves, this was verse 25 says. And verse 24 says they all fled. 24 says they all fled. They saw. They heard. They discussed. They fled. Isn't it happening with us? <laughs> we see newspapers, TVs, news. Things happening around us. How much afraid are we? 
നാം എത്ര ടൈറ്റോടെ എന്ന് പറയുന്നു വി ആർ കൺസേൺഡ് അബൌട്ട് അവർ കൺട്രി നമ്മുടെ രാജ്യത്തെ കുറിച്ച് നാം ചിന്ത വിവരാണ് വി ആർ വറീഡ് ഓഫ് വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് എന്താണ് അടുത്ത ദിവസം ഭോഗിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഞാൻ ചിന്ത ചിന്ത വിവരാണ് ഡോണ്ട് വറി എന്നാൽ അങ്ങനെ പേടിക്കേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല ഗോഡ് ഈസ് ഇൻ കൺട്രോൾ ദൈവം നിയന്ത്രിക്കുന്നവനാണ് ഹി ഹി ഈസ് എ സോവറൻ ഗോഡ് മാത്രമല്ല അവൻ സർവാധികാരി ദൈവമാണ് ഓക്കേ ഫോർ എവറി ഗോലിയ ഗോഡ് ഹാസ് റൈസ്ഡ് അപ് എ ഡേവിഡ് റിമെമ്പർ ദാറ്റ് നമ്മുടെ ചിന്തിക്കേണ്ടത് എല്ലാ ഗോലിയ ും നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ വരുമ്പോൾ അതിനെതിരായ ഒരു ദാവീത് നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഉണ്ട്. The Bible is full of such examples. അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഉദാഹരണങ്ങൾ ബൈബിളിൽ ഒരുപാട് കാണുവാനായി സാധിക്കും. ശത്രുക മേശക പേത്നഗു. ശത്രുക മേശക പേത്നഗു. സ്റ്റീഫൻ. അതുപോലെ സ്റ്റെഫാനോ. ഡാനിയൽ. ഡാനിയൽ. നെഹമായ. നെഹമിയാവ്. You name it. God has raised up a Dan a, a, a David for every Goliath. എല്ലാ ഗോലിയാത്ത പ്രയാ രസങ്ങൾക്ക് മുമ്പിൽ ഒരു ദാവീനെ ദൈവം ഉയർത്തി. Even in modern times. ഇന്നും അങ്ങനെ ദൈവം ചെയ്യും. And some pray pay a big price for it. പലരും വളരെയധികം വിലാതിന് വേണ്ടി നൽകേണ്ടി വരുന്നു ഓക്കെ സോ എനി ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഡേവിഡ് ആൻഡ് സോൾ ബിഫോർ ഡേവിഡ് ആൻഡ് ഗോലിയത് ഹാപ്പൻ ഈ ബിഫോർ ഡേവിഡ് ആൻഡ് ഗോലിയത് ഇൻസിഡന്റ് ഹാപ്പൻ ഇൻ ചാപ്റ്റർ 17 വാസ് ദെർ എനി ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഡേവിഡ് ആൻഡ് സോൾ ദാവീദും സൗലും ഏതെ നിലയിൽ പരസ്പരം ബന്ധപ്പെട്ടിരുന്നു ഈ വിഷയം ഉണ്ടാകുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് ഇസ് എ ക്വസ്റ്റൻ ഓക്കെ യെസ് ദേ ഹാഡ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ അവർ പരസ്പരം ഇതിനു മുമ്പ് സംസാരിച്ചിരുന്നു uh we see that in chapter 16 padaram adhyayathile kaaryam namukku kaanu sadhi look at the the introduction of david by the soldiers of saul to saul saulinde padayaligal daavidine kurichu edha nilayilana daavidine parichayapaduthi kodukkunnathu chapter 16 verse 17 padaram adhyayathile was 18 was 18 you can read 18th vakya palikaril urthan bethlehemenaya israelide or magane yan kandittundu avan kinnara vayanil nikkunnu പരാക്രമശാലിയും യോദ്ധാവും വാക്ചാതുരിയും ഉള്ളവനും കോമളനും ആകുന്നു യഹോവയും അവനോട് ഉണ്ട് എന്ന് പറയുന്നു of all the things that are said about david here the one that stands out is the soldier telling saul the lord is with him ഇവിടെ പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ ഗുണങ്ങളെക്കാളും അപ്രമായിട്ട് ഈ ബാലികാരൻ പറഞ്ഞ ഒരു ഗുണം പ്രത്യേകമായിട്ടുള്ളത് യഹോവ അവനോട് ഉണ്ട് എന്ന് പറയുന്നു wow what a testimony എന്തൊരു നല്ല സാക്ഷ്യമാണ് suppose if i have to introduce tv and See, for, suppose if I have to introduce TV. Suppose <laughs> I have to introduce you. Okay. Okay. Suppose TV has to introduce me. Okay. Any case, sir, me, Parijay Pradhan, me, you. To Johnson and Dil. Johnson, sir, not Parijay Pradhan. Who does not know me? And I read that the article. How will how will TV introduce? Any case, sir, any case, sir. It's a question that we should be answering for each of us. Will the one who is introducing tell about me that the Lord is with him, or he is a godly man? Yeah, not pray, sir. It's about us. If if we are being introduced to a third person who does not know us, will the introducer talk about us as here is one person who is godly and the Lord is with him? നമ്മളെ കുറിച്ച് ഒരു വ്യക്തി മറ്റൊരു വ്യക്തിക്ക് നമ്മളെ കുറിച്ച് പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തി കൊടുക്കുമ്പോൾ ഇത് ദൈവം ദൈവദാസനാണ് ദൈവം ഈ വ്യക്തിയുടെ കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് എന്ന നിലയിൽ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തി കൊടുക്കാനായി സാധിക്കും റീസെന്റ്ലി ഐ റിസീവ്ഡ് എ കോൾ ഈ അടുത്ത കാലത്ത് എനിക്ക് ഒരു കോൾ ലഭിക്കാൻ ഇടയായി ഈ മന്ത് ആൻഡ് ഹാഫ് ആൻഡ് ദേ വെ ചെക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് എ പേഴ്സൺ അവരെ ഒരു വ്യക്തിയെ കുറിച്ച് ചോദിക്കുകയായിരുന്നു ഐ സെഡ് യെസ് ഐ നോ ദാറ്റ് പേഴ്സൺ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞ ആ വ്യക്തിയെ എനിക്ക് അറിയാം ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ദേ ഇൻക്വയർഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദ സ്പിരിച്വൽ സ്റ്റാൻഡി ആ വ്യക്തിയുടെ ആത്മീയ നിലവാരത്തെ കുറിച്ച് ചോദിക്കാൻ ഇടയായിരുന്നു I said as much as I know that person is spiritually very weak. ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു എനിക്ക് അറിയാവുന്ന അറിയാവുന്നത് വെച്ച് ആ വ്യക്തി ആത്മീയമായിട്ട് വളരെ വീക്ക് ആയ വ്യക്തിയാണ്. Even the family I'm not very sure of. ആ വ്യക്തിയുടെ കുടുംബത്തെ കുറിച്ച് എനിക്ക് വളരെ അറിയില്ല. So that's a question we should be answering to ourselves. If someone has to introduce I might be wrong. I see only outward God looks at the heart but of of the little that we know of each other. How will be my introduction your introduction? നമ്മളെ ഓരോരുത്തരെ കുറിച്ച് മറ്റൊരു വ്യക്തി മറ്റൊരു വ്യക്തിയോട് പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തുമ്പോൾ ഏത് നിലയിലായിരിക്കാം അവർ പരിചയപ്പെടുത്തുന്നത് റിമെമ്പർ ഡേവിഡ് വാസ് ദ പേഴ്സണൽ മ്യൂസിഷ്യൻ ഓഫ് സോ ചൗലിന്റെ പ്രിയമായുള്ള പേഴ്സണൽ മ്യൂസിഷ്യൻ ഹി യൂസ് ടു പ്ലേ ദ ഹാർട്ട് ഫോർ ദ കിംഗ് ലൈക്ക് ഇൻ ദ കിയർ ഓക്കേ നോട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഹി വാസ് ദ പേഴ്സണൽ ആർമർ വെയർ വേർസ് 21 ഓഫ് ചാപ്റ്റർ 16 
Saul is asking his commander, you know, this guy, who, who's, who's, whose child is this? His personal musician, personal armor bearer, but Saul had nothing, no knowledge about who David was. He was so insignificant. David, he shall in Mumbai and a personal life to love, musician Madhole, either woman, either no, and Gilum, Shaul and David and Kutuli for the Pillar. Saul never recognized David. Shaul and Gilum, David and Manslap and Sathis. You might be insignificant at your workplace. Wherever God has placed you, you might be insignificant. Your hard work, your honest work is often being ignored. Don't worry. A nobody in Israel today, David, a nobody in Israel today was going to become somebody. God had chosen him. God had prepared him for the task. And God was putting things in place to lift him from where he was to where he should be. Father of David had a plan suddenly. And he said, Son, verse 17, you can read. Yeah, 17 verse 17. <coughs> okay, Father is asking, why don't you take some food for your brother and, and his boss? Verse 18 says, you take it for the captain also. If the boss is happy, my son will also be comforted. That was the father's plan. Don't get into such things. Don't try to be his boss. Please God. Okay, so remember, this was not Jesse pushing David into the battlefield, but this was God at work because God wanted him or David to be where he should be at that time because his time had come to be lifted up. There are no accidents in believers' life. Always remember this. Good or bad. It is permitted by God. And God is at work. Putting things in place. To make sure. To make sure that you should be where you be where you ought to be. Now David is here at the battlefield. And verse 26 says, uh, 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 he, uh, when he comes in, you know, uh, this is Goliath by name. Yeah, yeah, verse 23. So David is here, and here in the presence of David is Goliath coming out. And David heard then, verse 23 says, David heard the challenge of Goliath. And look at the response of David. Verse 26, the last part. Who is this person that he should defy the armies of living God? Who, whom did actually defy Goliath? In the first instance, he says, I defy the armies of Israel. But how did David see it? Who is this person to defy the armies of living God? What a difference. What a contrast. Saul did not know the Lord. Was it that Saul did not know the Lord? Or, or the children of Israel had never have had an experience of God? 
I didn't know. Where they saw? No, they were not. They all of them knew God. All of them had the word of God. David knew God. David had the word of God. David was just putting into practice. All of us know the word of God. The brethren are known for knowing God's word. By birth, those, those you know, values are instilled in us by your parents. We learn the scriptures very well. We are very good in doctrines. Young age, young age, you can differentiate what is according to the Bible, what is not according to the Bible. But where we actually fail is to put the word of God into practice. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, Saul and the soldiers were trained for war. Who was the best fit to be fighting Goliath? Who was it? Saul, why? He is the king, okay. Okay, fine. Saul, okay, king, okay. Anyone else? He said Saul was the right fit. The, the best to fight, yes. Yes? Yeah, his build, he was shoulder and head above the normal, above the Israelites. He was the best as far as his physical stature was concerned. He was the, he was the king, of course he, should, he would have been trained. The soldiers were trained for this. But they had no confidence in their training because they had no confidence in God. David had no confidence, uh, David had no training but absolutely confident because he trusted God. Verse 32. David is in front of Saul. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail. What a confidence. A young lad. Not, not trained. A giant in front of him. And he is telling the king, let no one's heart fail because of this giant. And then, on, then he goes on to say, Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Thy servant. David knew he was the next king. If I was in the place of David, I would have said, what kind of king you are? Who made you king? What is the use of this big body? You resign now itself, I will take your position and show you how it is to be won. God ordained king was David and look at his humility, he was saying, Thy servant will go and fight. David knew that he was the king. Saul will be out, I will be in. But what humility is he exhibiting? God had promised you will be the king. <coughs> There was some delay. David got an opportunity to kill, kill, kill Saul in cave, if you remember that incident. But, not, but David did not want to help God. He was waiting for God's time. Thy servant. 
Let this be your mindset inside the church as well. At the same time, outside the church, when we are at our workplace or whatever responsibility God has given us. You might be really good in the work that you do. You might be better than your boss. But have the servant attitude. You might be very good in church. You might be blessed with many talents that God has given you. But be subject to the God ordained leadership. Leadership in church is God ordained. Leadership at workplace is God ordained. Always remember. God ordained uh, leadership never challenge. These are times when uh, in our churches we often uh, uh, come across people who challenge leaderships. Who made you an elder? Who made you an evangelist? You are not fit for this job. Never say that. Let me give you a warning. All who have created problems in the church, they have had a miserable end. Their generations have been cursed. Be very careful of what you speak in church. Be constructive, not destructive. We are humans. Failures are part of our life. We will never be perfect. I will never be perfect. You will never be perfect till we reach on that other shore. But let us be progressive. Considering others better than us. Have the servant attitude. <laughs> never challenge the leadership. If you do, you will be punished. Your generations will be punished. Brethren assemblies have many such examples. I know of people who have had a very miserable end. Be very careful. Okay, so we, we see the servant attitude, the humility. Let's have that attitude. Now as David is ready to fight, Saul is discouraging him. His brothers had already fired him left and right. Others also discouraged him. When you go out in the confidence of the Lord, be ready to be discouraged. People are there to discourage you. Trust God. Move forward. All the warfare that uh, Saul gave to David, he politely denied. He just took five stones and a sling. And verse 46. He was absolutely clear of the outcome before he went to fight. Verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. Very clear of the outcome of the battle. <coughs> Verse 47. The Lord saveth not with sword and spirit, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into your hands. God does not need your help. My help. Our help. No, God does not need it. All that he is looking to. A heart which is ready to receive his word and to obey his word. That's all what God wants. 
do what is do what you should be doing the rest leave it to the lord nam cheyya karyam nam cheyya baakiyulla devathil vittu kodukka why was david so confident of the result of this war of the fight ingane thirum ennalla vishayathil david endondana etra maatram oru orthu lebichu contrast it with saul and the servants and the soldiers appol thanne nam mattu bhagathu shaulum athante parayaligalum nam chindikkya why they did not have this confidence ennu nangane ullu oru orappu mattulorku undayilla anyone would like to answer this are we not parayana aagrahikkunu why david had this confidence and others did not ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു <laughs> ഇതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ദാവീദ് അപ്രകാരം ഉറപ്പുണ്ടായിട്ടുള്ളത്. David had confidence in God. That's fine. Why did David have that confidence and others did not? You see? Yes. God had called him. Of course God had called him. Experience. Experience. Yes. One more thing. Yes. Very important point. Experience. He looked back to his life how God had helped him to kill a lion and a bear to take the lamb out of its mouth. Not just experience. And experience at the same time he had a personal relationship with the lord which he enjoyed on a daily basis namaku ariya davidina devathulla bandathil pala udaharanangal thanne jeevithil nam prakrathil thirinj thirinj nokki chindikkuvanayittu sadhikkum angane aa nilayil thanikku devathode dayanthinamulla oru vyaktiparamaya bandham davidina devathulla his eyes were focused on the lord and the lord helped him no distraction oru asrudhayam undayilla my confidence is in the lord and the prathyaya shadhiyathina because i am in regular fellowship with him varanam njan adhigam aayittu nirantharam sambhakkathil remember david had many responsibilities ഇതാരും ഓർക്ക ദാവീദിന് വളരെ അധികം ഉത്തരവാദിത്തങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു he was not a boy who was just playing around running with no responsibilities no he had many responsibilities he had to take care of the sheep of his father he had to supply food to his brothers he had to play music for the king he had to carry the armor of the king and yet david had time to spend with the lord നമ്മൾ ഒരു കാര്യം ചിന്തിക്കുക ദാവീദ് വെറുതെ അവിടെ ഇവിടെ തിരിഞ്ഞു നടന്ന ഒരു ബാലൻ ആയിരുന്നില്ല തനിക്ക് വളരെ അധികം ഉത്തരവാദിത്തം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു തന്റെ ആടുകളെ നോക്കണമായിരുന്നു തന്റെ സഹോദരന്മാർക്ക് ഭക്ഷണം കൊടുക്കണമായിരുന്നു അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ശൗലിന്റെ ആയുധം വഹിക്കണമായിരുന്നു ശൗലിന് കിണരം വഹിക്കണമായിരുന്നു എന്നാൽ അതിന്റെ മധ്യത്തിലും ദൈവമായിട്ട് സമയം ചെലവഴിക്കാനായിട്ട് ദാവി സമയം ശിപ്പിൻ്റെ <laughs> തന്റെ തനിക്കുണ്ടായിരുന്ന എല്ലാ ഉത്തരവാദിത്തങ്ങളിലും ഭാര്യ ചുറ്റുവാദികളും മധ്യത്തിലും ദൈവമായിട്ട് എപ്പോഴും ഒരു വ്യക്തിപരമായ ബന്ധം താൻ ആസ്വദിച്ചു ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ദ റീസൺ വൈ ഹി കുഡ് ഫേസ് ദ ജയന്റ് ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ് വാസ് അബ്സൊല്യൂട്ട്ലി ക്ലിയർ ഓഫ് ദി ഔട്ട്കം ഓഫ് ദ ബാറ്റിൽ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഈ വലിയ മല്ലനെ വളരെ പ്രത്യാശയോടെ നേരിടുവാനും ആ യുദ്ധം എങ്ങനെയായി തീരും എന്ന് തനിക്ക് വ്യക്തമായ ഉറപ്പ് ലഭിക്കുന്നു മേ ഗോഡ് ഹെൽപ് അസ് ടു ലിവ് എ വിക്ടോറിയസ് ലൈഫ് ഒരു രീതിയിൽ വിജയകരമായ ഒരു ജീവിതം നയിക്കാൻ ദൈവം ഐ ആം ഗ്രേറ്റ്ഫുൾ ടു ദ ലീഡർഷിപ് ഹു ഹാസ് ഗിവൻ അസ് ഗിവൻ മീ ദിസ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഈ അവസരം എനിക്ക് തന്ന സഭയുടെ നേതൃത്വത്തിൽ ഞാൻ നന്ദി പറയുകയാണ് താങ്ക് യു സിബി ഫോർ ദ ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷൻ ഹെൽപ്പ് പ്ലീസ് കണ്ടിന്യൂ ടു റിമെമ്പർ മീ ആൻഡ് മൈ ഫാമിലി ആസ് വി കണ്ടിന്യൂ ഇൻ അഹമ്മദാബാദ് uh maybe continue to be salt and light of the earth and then ahmed bad then the program inee thodunnu munnotu povumbo ee logathil oppum velichamai theeruvanayittu ningalde prarthane njan chodichu it was for quite some time i have been wanting to come here kuchu naalai ivda varanam ne aagrahikkunu it's been four and a half years since i last visited and vanna session for naalara varsham kazhinju and god made it possible and i give god all the glory devam adu sadhyamaakki thirthu devathinalla mokkam thank you so much may god's name alone be glorified